The 10 most asked questions I get about being an airline pilot on YouTube, Instagram, we're gonna answer them today. And for that, Adam is here and he's gonna ask the questions. Hello. Okay. Hi there. From behind the camera to in front of the camera. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, let's get right into it. Don't waste any time. Um, so the first one we curated is, what does the first officer do while the captain is flying? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I get that question quite often because most of the people think first officers, they're not flying. I don't know why, but we are flying, guys. <laughs> we are. We, I swear. We, I swear. We're doing something as well. <laughs> no, uh, honestly. Um, basically, we separate, obviously, in captain and first officer. But the main key we separate in is pilot monitoring versus pilot flying. So one leg flying, let's say we fly to Punta Cana today, one leg there, I'm for example pilot flying, that means I'm flying the aircraft and the captain is doing ATC and um, all the other stuff, fuel checks, etc. PP. And um, on the way back, we swap the, ro the, the roads, no. not the rules. <laughs> the roads, the roads. <laughs> we change the whole game. <laughs> No, we, we swap the roles. And um, that's how we separate basically pilot flying, pilot monitoring. So yes, the, pilot, the first officer is also flying. Okay, second question. <laughs> is it true that the first officer and the captain have to eat the different meals while on the flight? Actually, we, we do try to do it. Okay. There's, there's not really a specific rule you ha that you have to do it. Okay. But most of the time, if somebody has fish, Mm -hmm. The other one takes the meat. All right. But since we're off the three, uh, three pilot cockpit nowadays in yeah. the long haul, that's not quite a bummer because we just looked at not all three of us eat fish. All right. All right. So you're pretty cautious about fish. Just... Yeah. Because yeah. fish is most of the time the point. Did anybody got sick on a plane from the food in your career? No. Never. Not yet. Never. Okay. Never. Okay. Um, how much does the autopilot actually do while flying? Ooh. <laughs> I don't want to say it, but I have to. <laughs> Quite a lot. <laughs> no, um, I would say it does most of the job. Probably around 99%. <laughs> but we feed the autopilot, so... Uh, but in the air, usually, pretty much. Yeah, only in the air. Well, we do the takeoff manually. We do the landing manually. And... Um, so when I'm flying, I basically leave the autopilot off until somewhere between five and 10,000 feet after takeoff mm -hmm. and coming into landing, depending um, if it's a new airport or anything. Yeah. If I've been there a couple of times, I turn it off pretty early, like around 8,000 feet. And yeah. um, if it's all new to me, I, I leave it on until I'm on final approach, all configured. Yeah. I've got free uh, headspace yeah. to do manual flying. I mean, it yeah. wouldn't make, make sense to sit there up there for five hours and just no, try to uh, hold uh, the plane straight. Imagine like 10 hours, uh, <laughs> one millimeter to the left, one millimeter to the right. No. You're exhausting. And yeah. by the way, that the autopilot can do it way better than us up there. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. And uh, continuing with the autopilot, can the autopilot actually land the plane? And how often do you do an auto landing, if so? Okay. So when we don't have to, we never land with autopilot on. Yeah. Except in training, because we have to train for it. Uh, so in line training, we have to do an auto landing mm -hmm. with a training captain that we saw, that we know how it works. In the simulator training, we do it a couple of times. And in each check flight, we do it a couple of times. But uh, on, on the line, we basically never do it, except we have to. When do you have to do and it? And we have to do it when we have a cut three weather. All right, yeah. Which means we as humans wouldn't be able to see the runway early enough that okay. we could land the plane visually. Yeah, makes sense. And that's when the autopilot comes in pretty mm. handy. And when, how long does the autopilot put to, <coughs> only to touch down or to stop or where, until when does... Uh, the A330 has a rollout guidance as well. So okay. that means it touches down, then we have auto brake selected, so it brakes. Okay. And it holds the center line of the runway. Oh, okay. And then we disconnect it. Okay, and then, then you roll off. When we're at taxi speed, we disconnect it and roll off. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Okay, uh, next question. How often do you have to work as a long-haul pilot? <laughs> um, depends. Depends. 
So I've got months, like December last year, I had uh, four flights in one month and one week of vacation at the beginning of the month. So that was pretty packed up. Yeah. But I would say that's a rare case where you fly four long haul flights in three weeks and um, it's pretty exhausting as well. Yeah. But other than that, I would say between two and four, but three is the golden middle, I would say. Okay. Yeah. And, um, but those are very in length. So some flights are like yeah. only two, three days and some yeah. are four or five yeah. days. So, so basically if I'm looking at my roster, I've got between 10 to 15 days at home. Okay. And the rest I'm flying. Oh, yeah. okay. No, not too yeah. bad. Um, do, 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 do. Why do the engines get so quiet shortly after takeoff? No, I got that one quite often. Um, that's pretty simple explanation there. Because airports are often next to big cities and everything. So, and planes, they make noise. A lot. <laughs> and people don't like noise, especially older people probably, <laughs> yeah. living near the airport. The main thing why we reduce thrust after takeoff is to reduce noise okay. to the cities surrounding the airport. And that's called NADP approach. NADP stands for Noise Abatement Departure Procedure. And we've got two of them. In uh, the A330, we've got standard one, 1,000 feet above uh, ground level. Mm -hmm. So at 1,000 feet, we lower the nose, and then we set from um, max continuous flex, we pull it back to climb, and that reduces the thrust of the engines to the climb thrust. Okay. And that's when you hear that. Ooh. Okay, so just, just to reduce the noise, otherwise. Reduce nose and uh, definitely engine wear, because oh, okay. we want our engines to live long, because they're pretty expensive. And um, that's why we reduce thrust as well, because that just um, what means Sean. Um, to 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 to. Oof. Yeah, he's the British guy. And <laughs> uh, to to. Uh, yeah, to reduce the strain of the. the yeah, engine. reduce the stress on the engine, basically. Okay, so the service interval for an engine depends on hours and how much stress the engine got over that interval of time. Basically, on hours, yeah. Hours, but if you would fly more maximum thrust, the interval would shorten. The the general engine life circle would shorten. All right. Yeah. Okay. This. Yeah. Okay. The wear and tear is yeah. higher with the force. Okay. Okay. This one was actually quite interesting. I um, had that on my own when I was flying. Um, what does the small triangle uh, triangle mean? Um, where the passengers sit next to the window. Mm -hmm. So in some rows, you see a little triangle on the wall. Yeah. What's that? They're for? always at the same spot, basically. Okay. I didn't know that as well until I went to flight school. <laughs> I was always curious, like, what the hell is that triangle? And um, that basically is, we've got four of them in the A330 and A320 in every model of Airbus. And they are situated, situated, yeah, situated at the leading edge and the trailing edge of the wings. So if you look out, if you look out of that window, of the first one coming from the front to the back, you would see the front edge of the wing, so the oh, okay. leading edge. Yeah. And if you go to the other one, you've got the trailing, trailing edge. edge. And that's basically there. So that if something happens during a flight, that you, the stewardess knows where to look. If we send her to the wing, to check something basically oh, okay that she would know where to look that she doesn't okay. have to go to every passenger is that the wing is that the wing is that the wing oh, okay. yeah I mean, you've it. got basically a clue it should be somewhere in the middle of yeah. the aircraft yeah but, but from there you got like the perfect the perfect view of the leading edge and the training edge oh, and okay. we use it to check for icing on the ground when we yeah. board the plane and we want to know if we have to de-ice on that day or not we go there as pilots and look at the wing from the top okay. and of course from the bottom we can't see anything makes sense Fine. Um, crew commanders in the cap from, from the cabin crew, all doors in park. What does that actually mean? Park the doors? So that basically means um, as soon as we come uh, into the parking position yeah. and we shut off the engines, yeah. then we give the, after they shut down, yeah. we give them the command of all crews, uh, cabin crew, all doors in park. And that means that they should disarm the slides. So if you put uh, the, the cabin door into park, yeah. This basically disarms the slides. So if you open the door, you yeah. don't shoot the slide. Yeah. Happens sometimes. Just happened yeah. like three days ago in Frankfurt. Three days ago? No. Not with my company, by the way. 
That's good. <laughs> but it happened uh, three days ago. Yeah. Oh shoot! And the stair was connected to the aircraft. Oh no! Did somebody get hurt? It looked funny because the slide went in, like in between the stairs, up in the sky, and then there was a stair still, and the slide hanging up in the sky. Shoot. Yet I have to delay. Had to delay the flight. Expensive. Expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Cheap hobby. Yeah. Shooting slides. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's quite interesting. Why do you have the boarding groups on your boarding pass? What What are the boarding groups for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So who who gets what boarding group and why? Mm -hmm. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure about it. And it says one, two, three, four, five, six, as I know. Mm -hmm. And one is basically a priority boarding, uh, wheelchairs, uh, small children, uh, little children. Okay. and everything and then we've got two business class three premium economy mm -hmm. and we've got four five and six and that's pretty um smart what they did there because mm -hmm. um as far as i know they four is the window people mm -hmm. and five is the middle people and uh six is the aisle people okay that you don't basically you go and board that side next Okay. That you don't get all that stuffed up in, in the middle of a boarding process. Okay. That's pretty smart. Yeah, a lot of people seem to have problems with their boarding groups. Yeah, they, they just disregard them. <laughs> absolutely. Boarding group <laughs> Every one, time please. I yeah, I've got like... six, I'm coming in. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Why? Oh, uh, yeah, well, that's yeah. obvious. Um, and the last one. How long does it actually take to become a pilot? Um, that depends if you do an integrated or a modular course. Mm -hmm. Modular is if you don't have the money up front, you can um, do it in steps, PPL, CPL, etc. And if you do it integrated, you do it all at once. And the integrated takes you around, uh, I would say, excluding a type rating, around, how long did I take? 22 months, something? Mm -hmm. Nearly two years, I would say. Nearly two years. So what would you say would be the fastest Integrated. Integrated. integrated, yeah, the fastest integrated course. How long would it take you if you would be like the best in every group and didn't take time for anything? I didn't take time for anything. I wasn't the best in the group. I was pretty good, by the way. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I was a good. <laughs> Shut up. I wouldn't say you can't make it much faster than I did with my integrated course okay. because we did eight weeks of theory, three months of flying, nine months of theory, and then three months of flying, and that's it. Okay, yes. Yeah, so. And we, we did like five times a week eight hours so that's like training. the basic scheduled program yeah. and if you do everything every that integrated time, is around that time so between about 18 two and 22 months okay and the type rating then comes after that yeah time. the type rating comes with an airline okay and how long does that take uh, that depends as well in two it took me like six months because that was my first initial type rating so i had to do base training base training is landing training all right in the real plane. Okay. Because in my second type rating here with Discover, I uh, didn't need to do it. Okay. Because I already got my first initial base training. Yeah. So I just had to do a landing training, base training in the simulator. Okay. okay. So that spares, uh, for, saves. saves some time. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and um, so I would say in general, type rating takes around three to five months to get. No, it's not too bad. Okay. Yeah, because you've got a lot of theory stuff. Sounds yeah. good. That's, That's all. it. All the questions I got, I wrote down. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> yeah, if you like this style of series, um, let us know in the comments. We could do like a Q&A once a month or something like that. We had to find, we have to find somewhere where we could collect all the questions from you guys. Yeah, we, we could do a community post. And post it. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, so keep a look, look out for community post. We'll put one up probably. If you have any questions. Yeah, and also... you can all write them down there and we'll do another video yeah. about that. If you have uh, uh, any uh, technical questions as well, maybe we can do a little interview about that one. Yeah. With that said, have a good one. See ya. Peace.